Ah, winter in the Florida Keys. John Brownlee, editor-in-chief of Saltwater Sportsman, knows that when the cold fronts blow through this part of the state, it's time to head offshore in pursuit of the Spindlebeak. It's all about tradition, tackle, timing, and the perfect live baits. Beautiful! He's coming to you, Kevin. He's coming to you. Ride along with John and two very special guests as SFTV goes sailing the Keys. We're on a fish. Whoa! It's cold, it's windy, it's rough, and for whatever reason, that makes for prime sailfish conditions. It really gets some snapping. And right now, we're at the height of the annual sailfish migration where they travel by the thousands down the coast of Florida and right past all the Florida Keys. Our sailfish adventure begins out of the world famous Bud and Mary's Marina in Isla Mirada. Captain Nick Stanzik, son of owner Richard Stanzik, is at the helm of our beautiful Yellowfin 36 center console. My guest is Kevin Barker, Vice President of Yellowfin Yachts. Kevin has been instrumental in the development and marketing of one of the most highly sought after boats on the market today. And he is a very accomplished angler to boot. The 120 mile Florida Keys Island chain is home to the continental United States only living coral barrier reef. This teeming backbone of marine life runs the length of the Keys, about five miles offshore, and running along its drop-off are hungry sailfish on the prowl. Nick, looks like a good spot for Ballyhoo. How about uh, on top of some of these grass patches right here? The key to a successful day chasing sailfish is fresh, active, live baits. But sometimes, this is easier said than done. So Nick, down here in the Florida Keys, we have a little bit of a unique way of catching bait, uh, mixing sand with chum. Tell us a little right. bit how that works. Well, we have a bucket of sand, you know, it's just like fine ground sand. We leave a bucket of chum out the night before, and it kind of thaws out and gets soft. Right. And we mix it together, add a little bit of water. Uh, and we don't make it too soupy. You want your balls to stick together. And when we come catch uh, sardines, cigar minnows, and pilchers, it helps cloud up the water, and we can make little balls, and it brings the chum to the bottom. And the group, the fish, you know, will kind of group around it. And then we can throw the net. So it serves two purposes. You can cloud the water and get them to kind of congregate around the little sand balls. And they don't see it. They don't see no, the net coming. Exactly. You know, it clouds up. They can't see the net as well. Fish like cigar minnows will run if you don't have that. And uh, you, there's no way to get them with a cast net without the sand. Very tough to catch them with that sand and uh, chum and mixed in. We got the smorgasbord of bait today, buddy. We got blue runners in there. We got everything. Nice. Nick throws a cast net and loads the live well with live ballyhoo, a favorite of sailfish. The other well holds live pilchards. Nick, we got two live wells full of bait. What say we go fishing? Sounds good to me. How about it? Little conch? Is that Little where conch, we're going? Let's go, let's go. Heading for Little Conch. Here we go. Vamanos. Little Conch Reef off Isla Morada is a well known spot where sailfish aggregate each winter. And the presence of frigate birds when we arrive makes us hopeful that the fish are there. Nick, this looks like a good spot. What do you think? Uh, we should give it a shot. A little bit of weed, blue water. Yeah, a couple of birds in. working around. Yeah. We'll fly a kite. Let's see how that works. All righty. Let me keep the nose into the wind there. We're good. Kites are a traditional gear for South Florida sail fishermen. Release clips hold the fishing line, dropping the line when a fish bites. This keeps the terminal tackle out of the water and creates a natural drop back. The idea is to keep your baits right near the surface. A little bit labor intensive kite fishing because you have to always be adjusting your baits, but it really is effective. Live goggle eyes are the kite baits of choice, and brightly colored floats attached to the end of the leader allow the anglers to see where their baits are in relation to the surface. Two or three baits are fished downwind from the boat on the kites, and several other baits, in this case live ballyhoo, are fished as flat lines. Okay, this way we cover all the bases. Just like that, we're fishing. Love it. All right, Kevin, we're all set up here. We got two kite lines and a flat line out. Essentially, what we're trying to do is intercept sailfish as they move up and down the reef looking for bait. Got some uh, frigate birds, man of war birds diving behind us, so it looks really good. Sure right looks now, good. Oh, look at this. The frigate bird's coming right over our baits. 
swimming at you. Oh, oh. watch the no, short mate, short mate, short mate. One o'clock, two o'clock. Something just boiled around it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is, right there. Yeah. That was it. Is that a sail? Wanted that in one. Yep, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Be him, be him, be him, be him. Are you on? Keep on I don't think he's there. He's on. There he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Got him. Coming up, our crew discovers what's on the other end of Kevin's line. Is it a sailfish or some other mystery fish? Sport Fishing Television is presented by Yellowfin, the choice of champions. By Mercury, number one on the water. By Penn, the biggest name in fishing. And by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. See him yet. Come on, give me the double. Where's the double? Uh, might not be him. He's right here, whatever it is. Uh, is he off or you still got him? All right. Still got him, just swimming. Just swimming right to us. He just hooked. He just figured out he's hooked. Come on. He's acting sail like now. Come on, jump, fish. All right, man, nice job on him. He didn't jump, that doesn't mean necessarily it's not a sailfish. Right. He's acting unsailfish like. Yeah. They'll do that, though. I've caught them when they never jump, so. Left the other bait out there hoping for the double header, but it has not happened. Yeah, did you see that? The, uh, the, long, uh, the long float, the yellow float, just all of a sudden <laughs> took off, which is indicative of a sailfish bite. They don't mess around, usually. They come and grab it and go. Well, there he goes again. See what's coming up. Yeah, we got double line. Got a leader. No. It's right at the right at the water line there. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's close. 40 feet. 50 feet. Looked like he was coming right up to the top. I never saw him. Yeah. Never saw color. Big head shake right there, wasn't yeah. it? Wahoo like. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, color. Wahoo or kingfish? That wahoo. You gonna stick him? Sweet, yeah, baby. Oh, man. How about that, brother? Nice. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Nice. All right, brother. That's cool. Good wire. He's pushing 45 pounds. <laughs> Damn. Oh, he was the, moving a lot. The boat. Oh, yeah. I could tell it was something yeah. decent. Nice. All right, let's get him on ice. How about in the Kevin. coffin box? Thank you. There we go. Toss him right on in. Never come to the Keys without a cooler. Sweet. All right, ah, pretty work, man. Thank you very much. Nice job, you. Cap. Nice no, job. I think yeah. we got a second bite because the other rigger got taken and it chopped it right off. Yep. It's either it a King again. Mac or a Wahoo, but uh, whatever it was, let's go find another one. Sounds good. You never know what you'll catch when live baiting for sailfish in the Florida Keys. Kevin's 43-pound Wahoo was certainly a welcome surprise. After a slow morning, we moved inshore where sailfish were chasing schools of ballyhoo in shallow water, an event known as showering bait. We chased the fish around and saw quite a few, but didn't hook up. So we headed back off the edge and put the kites back out to see if we could raise a fish. You ready, John? You ready, Kevin? Right there in the weeds. I see him. I see yep. him. He's yep. feeding right Pick on top of the weeds. Pick up your bait. Ready, let him eat it. He's on the long one. He's on the long one. He's on the. Oh, he's off. He's off. He's coming to you, Kevin. He's coming to you. Somebody pitch a bait. There you go. There he is. Get him. Get him. There you go. Thanks, brother. There you go. All right. Dude, I'm on. There you go. go. Double. You want to spin us around to the front? Yeah, let's go. Go bow to him. I'm going up. 
Double header just in the nick of time. Beautiful thing, isn't it? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at him go, man. He's jumping like crazy. A center console boat gives you a distinct advantage when fighting fish. By moving the angler or anglers to the bow, you can chase the fish down in forward gear, allowing the anglers to regain line quickly while maintaining complete control of the boat. I got a lot of line out. Yeah, yeah me too. There we go. There you go. Coming up. Oh, beautiful. I just lightened up on him. We're pretty close over here. I think I'm closer than you. Yeah. Nick, let's see if we can stick a tag in him. Oh, mine's jumping. Oh, <laughs> Way out there. there. Woo! Tag sticks loaded, ready to go. Coming up. Nice guy. I got him to get him up. Yep, I want to get a good tag shot on him. He's tagged, all right. All right, we got the tag in him. Let's let him go, Nick. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. You get him? Yep, I think he's good. Here we go. He's in good shape. All right, swimming off great. Beautiful tag shot, too, brother. Thanks. Let's go get the other one. It's always rewarding to release a healthy sailfish and watch him swim away. Coming up, Nick and Kevin try to complete the double header. We're sail fishing in Isla Morada in the Florida Keys, and after releasing the first fish of a double header, we're now chasing Kevin Barker's fish, which has taken a great deal of line. But as Captain Nick Stanzik drives the boat following the fish, Kevin regains line, and soon the second sailfish is close to the boat, ready for release. See if we can get a tag in this one. Right here. Ho, ho, ho. Nick, you want to come try to take a wrap on him? We'll get a tag in him. Good color. He's in good shape. Coming back. Coming back. I'm coming. I'm coming, look at that. Trying to do this without stabbing you. He's got to calm down a little bit. There we go. Got him. Good tag. Nice tag shot, if I do say so myself. That was good. Very nice. I want to take it down at once or twice. All right, man. Beautiful fish. Ready for the release? Let's do it. Yep, he's good. Got good color, kicking hard. Looks good. Looks real good. All right, there he goes. Excellent work, Chief. Good work. Good job. Great job. That's exactly how it's supposed to work, man. We look over, we see a fish feeding along a weed line, along an edge. Flip a bait out there. He eats a kite bait. Eats one we throw into him. Double header. Nothing to it. That's how it's supposed to work. Exactly. Two sailfish releases, two tags. Just the way we like it. The waters off South Florida and the Florida Keys provide sportsmen with some truly incredible fishing, including the chance at a world record. If you happen to be skillful or lucky enough, there are two organizations you should be familiar with to help document and preserve the memory of your once in a lifetime catch the International Game Fish Association, and King Sailfish Mounts. The International Game Fish Association, or IGFA, is a membership-based association of marine anglers formed in 1939 to develop and promote a worldwide code of ethics related to the sport of fishing. The IGFA is well known for its dedication to marine conservation 
and for recording and publishing statistical information with regard to world record fish. World records that record the heaviest fish of that species ever caught are referred to as all tackle world records, regardless of the line and tackle size as long as everything falls within IGFA regulations. However, there are other categories for world records, the most popular being the line class categories, based on the breaking strength of the line used, ranging from two pound to 130 pound line. In order to apply for an IGFA world record, you must weigh your fish on land, not on the boat, using a scale that is certified both before and after the noted catch was weighed. To apply for an IGFA line class world record, you must send in a sample of the actual fishing line so that it can be tested to confirm its breaking strength. These days, it is not necessary to kill your fish to qualify for a world record or to have a mount created. You now have the option of commemorating each of your angling achievements with a magnificent release mount, thanks in part to the dedicated efforts of progressive taxidermist King Sailfish Mounts of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. For decades, popular game fish were killed and brought back to the dock for photographs and for mounting. This was especially the case along South Florida's Sailfish Alley from Palm Beach to Key West. As a result, sailfish were becoming more and more difficult to catch. King Sailfish Mounts introduced the release mount concept in 1991, forever changing the direction of the taxidermy industry. With worldwide demand for its products, King Sailfish Mounts now produces all species of marine and freshwater game fish and has been credited with coining the term release mounts. A release mount is produced without the need for any part of the actual fish, which means you can release your catch and still hang it in your home or on your office wall. All you need to provide is the approximate length or weight of the fish, and King Sailfish Mounts will create a mount. They can even add interesting details that were unique to your fish. For more information on world record sport fishing or to join the IGFA, go to IGFA.org. And to order your release mount, contact King Sailfish Mounts by going to KingSailfish.com. Coming up, the Florida Keys have lots more to offer than just great sail fishing. Sport Fishing Television has been presented by King Sailfish Mounts, offering a full selection of world-class release mounts. By Chica Lodge and Spa, luring anglers to the Florida Keys for more than 60 years. By Bomber Saltwater Grade, built to dominate. And by Ray Marine, world leaders in marine electronics. The islands that make up the Florida Keys are strung together by a series of 42 bridges and as soon as you hit the first one, you'll begin to relax. The Keys offer unparalleled access to outdoor recreation, and the list of potential activities goes on and on. Obviously, the fishing is great, with world-class action both inshore and offshore, with a wealth of species available to anglers. But there's a lot more to do in the Keys than just fish. Windsurfing and kiteboarding have become extremely popular activities, with several international competitions now taking place in the area. The scuba diving and snorkeling options are almost endless along North America's most popular coral reef and on many ancient shipwrecks and newer artificial reefs. Bird watchers will find countless opportunities for viewing rare and exotic species, and there's kayaking, parasailing, and the ever-popular Key West sunset. At the end of the day, you'll have hundreds of fine dining options to choose from along with exciting entertainment available at many famous Keys night spots. The Florida Keys, they add up to what can only be described as the total family vacation experience. During our Isla Mirada fishing trip with Captain Nick Stanzik, we were fortunate enough to be able to tag two sailfish. I have the pleasure of serving on the board of directors of the Billfish Foundation, the foremost billfish conservation organization in the world, and I know the importance of tagging in the ongoing effort to protect the world's threatened billfish species. Tagging provides invaluable information to scientists on the migration patterns of billfish and also gives some insight into age and growth information as well. It's important to learn proper tagging technique before you try it on your own. Take your time and get the fish settled down and calm before attempting to place the tag. It's almost impossible to tag a thrashing fish correctly. When the fish is settled, insert the tag firmly into its shoulder, six inches or more behind the head and close to the dorsal fin. Be careful to avoid placing the tag in the fish's gut where it can damage internal organs. And before you release the fish, make sure it's swimming strongly and has good color. If it doesn't, take the time to revive it 
by slowly pulling it through the water holding onto its bill. To find out more about tagging, visit the Billfish Foundation's website at www.billfish.org. The cast and crew of SFTV stay at the beautiful Chica Lodge and Spa in Isla Mirada, truly the crown jewel of the Florida Keys. Since 1946, this historic luxury resort has enchanted guests with world-class fishing, exceptional accommodations, and gracious hospitality. While mom enjoys the lavish spa, the kids will love Camp Chica and the saltwater lagoon complete with fish. Or you can all relax on one of the most beautiful and secluded private beaches in Florida. Play golf or tennis, swim in one of the amazing pools, fish off the huge pier, snooze in a hammock, take a snorkeling, diving, or fishing excursion, this truly is paradise. The recently rebuilt Main Lodge offers amazing culinary choices, including the Nikai Asian Grill and Atlantic's Edge restaurant featuring indoor and outdoor dining. All the new rooms in the lodge include a balcony overlooking the Atlantic Ocean or resort gardens. There are many choices of suites and bungalows nestled around the 27 acres of lush landscaping. Escape to the oceanfront sanctuary and barefoot elegance of Chica Lodge and Spa. Visit them online at chica.com. A special thanks goes out to Richard Stanzik at the historic and world-famous Bud & Mary's Marina and to his son Nick for a great trip. Be sure to book your next inshore or offshore charter with Bud & Mary's, the best in the business. And, of course, to our good friend Raymond Douglas of King Sailfish Mounts for allowing our hearing-impaired viewers to enjoy our show. For Kevin Barker and Nick Stanzik, I'm John Brownlee. See you on a sport fishing television adventure real soon.